very good afternoon i welcome you all to the session of thermal engineering basic and applied and today we shall discuss about gas turbine units and to analyze the performance of gas turbine units we shall discuss about another thermodynamic cycle and that is the breton cycle in the last a few classes in particular during our discussion of steam power module we have discussed about the vapor power cycle and the sole purpose was essentially to produce power now for the gas turbine units again we need to discuss about gas power cycle and the objective is to produce power but if you try to you know understand vapor power cycle and gas power cycle only the difference is the working fluid in a vapor power cycle we have discussed about the power generation power production using a working fluid that is steam or steam water mixture but here for the gas turbine units power will be produced through several processes and those processes will be executed in several units and the working fluid is gas so for the gas power cycle you know breton cycle is the air standard cycle i would like to discuss again that whether we have discussed about steam power cycle or we have discussed about the gas power cycle like auto cycle diesel cycle in all those cycles essentially we had to map or compare the processes with an air standard cycle for example you know for the gas power cycle that we have discussed about the uh, auto cycle diesel cycle so basically you know that air standard cycles those are used to analyze the performance of a petrol engine of a diesel engine or the auto cycle and diesel cycle but for the vapor power cycle you know that it is not the gas rather it is a pure substance so we had to analyze the performance of a steam power plant using another thermodynamic cycle that is the rankine cycle so today we shall discuss about you know gas turbine units and let us start our discussion with the classification of the gas turbine units so gas turbine unit there are two broad classes of gas turbine unit first one is open cycle gas turbine unit and second category is closed cycle gas turbine unit so these two are the two different you know classifications of the gas turbine units now we shall be discussing about both open cycle and closed cycle units with schematic depiction i would like to mention here you know like auto cycle is used to compare the performance of a petrol engine diesel cycle is used to compare the performance of a diesel engine rankine cycle or modified rankine cycle is used to compare the performance of a uh, steam power you know plant similarly open cycle gas turbine unit to be precise the air standard cycle breton cycle so this air standard cycle is used to measure or you know compare the performance of the gas turbine units so what are the applications of these gas turbine units applications are 
you know aircraft field propulsion and also captive power plant. Typically, you know that uh, for a gas cooled nuclear reactor, a small gas turbine unit is used. Open cycle gas turbine units are used mostly in aircraft field and propulsion. So, I am writing here used in aircraft field or propulsion and closed cycle gas turbine unit is typically used in captive power plant In particular, in a gas cool nuclear reactor. Basically, you know that energy which is produced due to, due to you know nuclear fission reaction, that energy is absorbed or taken by the gas and that gas is again in allowed to expand in a turbine and we try to obtain work output. So, now let us discuss about the open cycle gas turbine unit through schematic depiction. So, this is the compressor, air is drawn into the compressor and when air is passing through the compressor, uh, you know that compressor is used to increase the pressure. So, essentially air will be compressed and pressure will be you know increased, temperature also will increase, but the most important part is to increase the pressure of the working fluid. So, air is taken from the ambience. and that compressed air is now taken into this combustion chamber. Wherein fuel is spread, fuel supply and so basically compressed air is allowed to pass through the combustion chamber wherein fuel is spread and combustion will occur. It is because of this combustion, you know combustion reaction to be precise, the pressure of this working fluid will increase further, temperature of the working fluid will increase further. So, essentially the working fluid that comes out from this combustion chamber is now taken into this turbine and finally, so this is state point 3 and this is state point 4 and this is the turbine and we will be getting W work output. So, basically try to understand ambient air will be taken into this compressor, air will be compressed and at the exit of the compressor air is having high pressure, temperature is also you know higher than uh, of higher than its temperature 
uh, higher than its inlet temperature of course, that air will be now taken into this combustion chamber wherein fuel will be spread. It is because of this combustion reaction, temperature and pressure will be you know increased further of the working fluid and that you know working fluid is further taken into this turbine wherein the working fluid is allowed to expand and we obtain work output. Now, question is to run this compressor we need to feed you know some amount of energy in the form of work. What is done essentially you know, so basically this what is done this compressor shaft is connected to the shaft of this turbine right. So, basically what is done here? So, compressor shaft is connected to the shaft of this turbine when turbine is producing work I should say a significant part of that output work would be you know absorbed by this compressor for its operation. Now, essentially the work that will be getting from the turbine that is W net equal to W turbine minus W compressor. So, turbine work that would be available at the shaft at the you know shaft of this turbine is W T minus W C. So, this is basically turbine work and W C is the compressor work. So, this compressor work is input and turbine work is output. So, had we not connected this shaft of this compressor you know with this shaft of the turbine, we could have obtained turbine work that is W T, but what we can see from this you know schematic depiction is that a significant part of this turbine work will be absorbed by the compressor for its operation. Hence, we will be getting net work output and that is W T minus W C and W C is basically the amount of work that we need to feed to this compressor. So, this is basically open cycle. Now, why it is open cycle you try to understand we are taking the working fluid from the ambience and finally, the working fluid is again discharged into the ambience at you know at the exit of the turbine. So, this is you know discharge to ambience ok. So, this is called open cycle because working fluid is not further taken you know back to this compressor. Had we tried to you know recycle back this discharge that is the working fluid that comes out from the turbine into this compressor, then the cycle would be the closed cycle you know gas turbine unit. So, not only this there are a few you know uh, aspects that we shall be discussing in the context of closed cycle gas turbine unit, but this is the case. I would like to tell you a few important points pertaining to this unit that is you know open cycle gas turbine unit. See in the combustion chamber you know in real case high pressure and temperature is also high air will be supplied into this combustion chamber and then fuel will be spread therein. So, combustion reaction will occur. Now, when combustion reaction will occur or combustion will occur we will be getting you know products of combustion and the products of combustion are certainly different from the reactants. Now, the effect being you know a gradual decrease in the chemical energy of the fuel when you are supplying fuel. So, basically the fuel is having chemical energy. So, the effect is being if we allow not to have any heat transfer from the combustion chamber into the surroundings, then the sole effect would be a gradual decrease in the chemical energy of the fuel and simultaneous increase of the enthalpy of the working fluid. So, in real case 
it is because of this combustion with a reduction of the chemical energy of the fuel enthalpy of the working fluid will be increased, but to simplify the entire combustion process that would be used to you know quantify the mathematical form of the efficiency of the gas turbine cycle, it is assumed that equivalent amount of energy in the form of heat that would be generated because of this combustion will be now transferred to the working fluid and that energy as if is you know coming out or you know being liberated by the combustion reaction. So, this is basically import the important thing. Another important thing is you know that uh, the closed cycle gas turbine units cannot be compared with the constant pressure cycle, because try to understand here we are again for that discharging the you know working fluid to the ambience. So, it is not a constant pressure cycle. Second thing you know when we would like to map the processes, what are those processes? Compression of the air, then combustion that is basically equivalent amount of heat addition and finally, expansion of the working fluid in the turbine. So, the combustion process as I said few minutes back can be mimicked by an equivalent amount of heat addition to the working fluid at a constant pressure. The question is here the working fluid is air or gas. Now, the specific heat of the gas will vary because it is function of you know temperature as well. So, we have to assume that when the working fluid is getting compressed in a compressor or it is getting expanded in a, in a turbine, we can you know certainly consider an average value of C p and also gamma to measure the performance or to measure the processes those are there in a compressor or turbine. Another thing is in an open cycle gas turbine unit you know if we try to now map the processes in PV diagram. So, what we can see compression process that 1 to 2 that process can be mimicked by an isentropic process that is reversible adiabatic process. It is very difficult to you know achieve that process in real applications, but we can assume that the process is reversible adiab reversible adiabatic isentropic process and that process is represented in this PV plane by this 1 to 2 that is P v power gamma is equal to constant if we try to analyze the performance using uh, you know different air standard equation. So, now then process you know 2 to 3 that is at constant pressure heat addition and finally, so this is 4 that is the expansion process. So, basically you know 1 to 2 reversible adiabatic compression 2 to 3 constant pressure heat addition that is essentially mimics the combustion process and 3 to 4 reversible adiabatic expansion. So, all these processes, but see you know this is this is this is an open cycle. So, we did not connect the state point 4 and 1 though you know 
condition of the working fluid at state point 1 is the ambient air and when the working fluid comes out from the turbine it is discharged into the ambience. So, the state point would be you know ambient condition. Now, temperature will certainly be higher than the ambient air, but we are directly discharging into the ambience. So, this is the open cycle. Now, question is you know as I said that open cycle gas turbine units are used in most of the you know uh, aircraft in, in mostly in the aircraft fields. One important drawback is air is directly taken from the ambience. So, that air will be now allowed to pass through compressor then turbine. Air that will be drawn into the compressor from the you know ambience, it is very likely that foreign particles will also enter with the air stream and those foreign particles will now try to rather will interact with the turbine blades as well as compressor you know uh, rotor of the compressor. So, what will happen you know that uh, that those particles may you know create problematic issues essentially for the turbine blades and also the compressor uh, you know rotor. What is done? So, we need to ensure that air that should be drawn into the compressor should be you know properly screened to eliminate those foreign particles. So, high quality filters are needed, but if we somehow can you know recycle back the air that comes out or gas that comes out from the turbine into the compressor again, certainly we have to release certain amount of it. As I said you the state point 4 though it is directly that gas or air is discharged to this ambience, but that state point 4 is not exactly equal to state point 4 thermodynamically. Certainly, pressure and temperature of the working fluid at state point 4 is higher than the state point 1. So, next is that if we try to reuse the gas that comes out from the turbine, that means if you like to recycle back that working fluid, perhaps you know that contamination due to foreign particle of the incoming air stream can be avoided or can be prevented. So, now we shall be discussing about closed cycle gas turbine unit. See basically we need to close this. So, the gas that comes out from the turbine will be recycled back to the compressor through certain process. So, if we try to draw the schematic, now So, this is the schematic depiction of a gas you know closed cycle gas turbine unit. So, this is the turbine 
this is basically heat exchanger. This is also a heat exchanger. and this is the compressor. So, you can see again the compressor will be the shaft of this compressor is connected to the shaft of this turbine. A significant part of this turbine work output will be utilized to run this compressor. Here it is not you know the combustion chamber rather it is a heat exchanger. So, the working fluid in this circuit now in this heat exchanger few minutes back I said that the closed cycle gas turbine units are used in captive power plant or in a gas cool nuclear reactor. So, what will happen you know if I try to draw here may be there will be another circuit through which high temperature you know working fluid stream will be allowed to pass and in the primary circuit the working fluid will absorb that heat and that upon receiving that um, that heat or energy to be precise working fluid you know temperature pressure will increase. Essentially you know we are trying to mimic the entire combustion process by this you know heat exchanger unit and the remaining a uh, process is similar then the working fluid will you know enter into this turbine and again it will expand then w net will be produced that is w turbine minus w compressor and here we need to reject certain amount of heat. So, this is q out and here as if we are supplying certain amount of q in. So, upon receiving this amount of energy in the form of it, the working fluid in the primary circuit will be having you know uh, I mean the pro, you know the thermodynamic state of the working fluid will change and then at state point 3 the working fluid will be having high pressure temperature it will expand in the turbine and instead of directly discharging the working fluid into the ambience. Now, what is done here? that that working fluid is, a, is again taken through another heat exchanger wherein that working fluid releases certain amount of energy to another stream and then that stream is again for that that working fluid is again for that taken to this compressor and cycle is getting completed. So, this is basically closed cycle gas turbine unit. Now, question is also I could have discussed another important aspect which is valid for both closed cycle and as well as open cycle you know what do you expect that if w c is a significant part of this w t then certainly efficiency of the plant will be less rather very less. So, this is one of the uh, one important factor Second thing is you know that though we could map or we will map the processes by an reversible adiabatic process, what are those processes? Compression process as the expansion process in the turbine, expansion of the gas in the turbine. So, in real case these two processes will certainly have high degree of irreversibility and accounting for those accounting for that you know irreversibility you know actual efficiency of the turbine unit will certainly be less. So, that means the work output that we are expecting for a given design condition the actual work output by the turbine should be very much you know less than the uh, rather this w t that is that is what I have written here that is we are assuming that this work will be produced if we consider the process to be an isentropic process reversible adiabatic. But as I said in real case 
the pro this process will encounter high degree of irreversibility and accounting for that this w t should be even less than uh, the predicted value by using this isentropic process. Similarly, here I had written that w c is the work input to this compressor right. Now, if this is the amount of work needed by assuming the process is reversible adiabatic in the compressor. So, then the actual work that we need to supply to the compressor accounting for the you know irreversible irreversible losses should be more than this. So, essentially what we can understand the w net will be reduced. So, w t should be even less w c will be more and the gross effect would be reduction in w net and w net you know becomes so less that self sustaining of this unit becomes an you know problematic issue. So, while we will be considering the process either in a compressor or in this turbine, we have to assume that process or processes are not reversible adiabatic. So, now let us discuss about the uh, when compression process and expansion process in the compressor and in the turbine is are not reversible adiabatic. processes. So, now let us try to discuss about this particular aspect here now. So, what we can do? We can again map the processes in another plane that is T s plane and we also can map the processes in P v plane. As I said you know for the open cycle gas turbine unit, so this is 3, this is 2, this is 1, this is 4. So, this 4 to 1 that process is a new process for this closed cycle gas turbine unit because if we try to recall the P V diagram for the open cycle gas turbine unit we can see that you know the this these two points are not connected because there is no process, but now we are having another process that is you know represented in P V or T S plane by a constant pressure heat rejection. This is a constant pressure heat addition not only at constant pressure in reality in real application you know that when there is basically combustion will be there and it is because of this combustion uh, we, we are we are trying to discuss here using a simplified you know uh, schematic diagram. So, the, 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 the combustion process is mimicked here by an equivalent amount of energy addition at a constant pressure and constant C p. So, here also we are assuming that the amount of heat that is added to this working fluid in the primary circuit is at constant pressure and C p essentially because uh, in, 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 in a combustion process as I said you that you know C p of the gas will change in the combustion chamber. So, it is it is advisable to consider the average value of C p and gamma for uh, of course, in the C p in the combustion chamber again C p and gamma in the compression and com inside the compressor and turbine. So, here also the process is represented by a, by a constant pressure heat rejection process and that is shown here 4 to 1. 
Now, if we try to draw the T s diagram, so these two processes are basically you know this is you know P 2 equal to P 3 and it is P 4 equal to P 1, because P 4 equal to P 1 because this process is at a constant pressure you can see P 4 equal to P 1 equal to this. So, now this is the process 1 to 2 s. So, this is isentropic compression 1 to 2 s 1 to 2 P V to the power gamma equal to constant. So, here P V to the power gamma equal to constant here also right and this is P equal to constant here P equal to constant right. Now, so this is isentropic process and also again there will be isentropic expansion. So, this is 3 and this is 4 s right. So, if we try to calculate or if we try to represent the compression process by an isentropic reversible adiabatic compression and reversible adiabatic expansion of the working fluid inside the turbine then we can represent these two processes by you know uh, this 1 to 2 s and then 3 to 4 s uh, these two lines at, at, at constant entropy. Now, question is as I said that these two processes certainly will deviate from the reversible adiabatic process and uh, processes rather some degree of irreversibility will be there. And if we try to then represent you know the actual process then actual process should be like this. So, this is 2. Similarly, entropy it can be shown by using you know first TDS or sec second TDS uh, equation. I am sorry it can be shown by using or by making use of the second TDS equation that entropy in the expanses, expansion process. So, basically if we need to if we if we uh, consider the expansion process from 3 to 4 then in the direction of flow or uh, forward flow direction entropy will increase and the actual process would be like this. So, this is 4. So, now 1, 2, 3, 4 this is the actual process. So, I am writing 1, 2, 3, 4 actual cycle, actual cycle. Now, accounting for the losses due to irreversibility, we can define two important or efficiency efficiencies. One is isentropic efficiency of the compressor and isentropic efficiency of the turbine. Now, what is this? So, if I write isentropic efficiencies. So, for the compressor eta compressor isentropic equal to C in a compressor, compressor is basically not a work producing device, it is a device which consume work. So, this is a work absorbing device. So, if we try to define uh, what would be the you know uh, definition of this you know isent isentropic efficiency of the compressor. So, actual work needed to be supplied to the compressor should be greater than the isentropic uh, work needed to uh, run the compressor following isentropic process. So, that means work input uh, that means work input needed following isentropic process between P 1 and P 2 that is two pressure limits to the actual work input
needed for the same pressure limit. That means, C p into that means, the work input needed to run the compressor following the isentropic process between two pressure limits that is p 1 and p 2. We can see that p 1 and p 2 these two are the pressure limits and actual work input. So, this is basically T 2 s minus T 1 divided by C p into T 2 minus T 1. You can understand certainly the actual work needed to be supplied to the compressor should be higher than the you know work needed following the isentropic expansion. Hence, isentropic efficiency of the compressor will certainly be less than the predicted value uh, using the uh, 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 using the isentropic process. So, this is basically you know uh, the isentropic efficiency of the compressor. Similarly, isentropic efficiency for the turbine you can understand easily. Turbine is basically you know uh, work producing device. Turbine is a work producing divide device. So, here what would be the definition? Now, in a turbine we are getting work output. So, actual work output should be less than the predicted one following the isentropic expansion. So, we can write here that actual work output between P 3 and P 4 to the work output following the isentropic expansion between P 1 P th P 3 and P 4. So, this is essentially C p into T 3 minus T 4 divided by C p into T 3 minus T 4 s. So, this you know this is the you know mathematical expression of the isentropic expansion of the turbine. So, you know we could write the isentropic expansion isentropic efficiency of both compressor and turbine. Now, let us quickly uh, take an effort to derive the cycle efficiency. You know we had seen that we can have the mathematical quantification of the cycle efficiency. We also can quantify the cycle efficiency knowing the efficiency of all units like compressor, then certainly the combustion efficiency and then the turbine efficiency. If you, if you try to recall in the context of a steam power cycle, we could establish that the efficiency of a steam power cycle overall efficiency can be you know written you know like the efficiency of the boiler multiplied with the efficiency of the uh, turbine, then multiplied with the efficiency of the condenser and then with the pump. So, basically if we can figure out the efficiency of all these you know components and then the overall efficiency will be you know multiplication of these efficiencies. So, now, let us try to have as I said you that the Breton cycle is basically the air standard cycle for the gas turbine units. You know in other word I can tell you that uh, when you are trying to quantify the mathematical uh, mathematically quant when you try to mathematically quantify the thermal performance thermal efficiency then we need to compare all the processes by using an air standard cycle. So, and that cycle is for this particular gas turbine unit. Uh, for, for, for this particular uh, power producing unit to be precise gas turbine unit is the Breton cycle. So, if we just you know again redraw the T s diagram and 
then if we so this is 1 2 and 3 and 4 so again we, we shall try to quantify the efficiency assuming that the compression process and expansion process these two processes are reversible adiabatic so here this is basically w turbine or w out this is basically you know w c this is basically q in and this is q out so what is the efficiency thermal efficiency or i should say you know efficiency of the cycle is w net divided by q in that we have studied in our basic thermodynamic course. So, what is w net? If we go back to the either closed cycle unit or if even for the open cycle unit this is w t minus w c that is the turbine work which is produced minus the work the part of that work that is you know fed to the compressor for its operation. So, if we write here that is w net equal to w turbine minus w compressor. So, what is w turbine you can see from this T s diagram that C p into T 3 minus T 4 we are assuming that C p as I said you that uh, in real application it is it is it would be you know correct if we can consider the average value of C p and gamma because this process 3 to 4 and 1 to process 1 to 2 these two processes mathematically represented by the you know relation p v to the power gamma equal to constant and this gamma should be taken you know average because average gamma otherwise uh, because you know in the expansion and compression process gamma will change. Particularly in the compression process you know if I go here compression process C p n gamma will certainly uh, be changed why in this uh, in the real application what is done you know that if we go back to the open cycle gas turbine unit we are supplying fuel that fuel is supplied and combustion reaction has taken place. So, and it is because of this uh, particular factor gamma and C p will change and so it is advisable to consider the average value of C p and gamma when we shall we, we will be calculating the properties at the exit of the turbine using you know air standard equation that is p v to the power gamma equal to constant. So, here C p into T 3 minus T 4 minus compressor work is C p into T 2 minus T 1 as I said that here we are not going to consider the you know actual processes rather we are going to consider the isentropic processes for the compression and turbine uh, processes. So, this is w net and what about q in? q in equal to C p into T 3 minus T 2. So, that is the uh, the heat addition. So, if we now write the efficient cycle efficiency then we can write it a cycle equal to C p into uh, T 3 minus T 4 minus C p into uh, T 2 minus T 1 divided by C p into T 3 minus T 2. We can write one step further we can write that uh, T 3 minus T 2 minus T 4 minus T 1 divided by T 3 minus T 2 and that is basically 1 minus T 4 minus T 1 divided by T 3 minus T 2. 
So, this is the mathematical expression of the cycle efficiency of the uh, gas turbine unit. So, now we can again rewrite this. So, if we try to recall the process 1 to 2, few minutes back I have discussed that this is essentially a reversible adiabatic compression and that is represented by this uh, process p v power gamma equal to constant. right? So, that means we can write what would be the rise in temperature due to the compression process. If you try to recall, I have you know mentioned that after compression certainly pressure of the air will be higher, but temperature also will increase. So, T 2 by T 1 equal to P 2 by P 1 power gamma by gamma minus 1. So, that is the you know uh, sorry I did mistake it should be gamma minus 1 upon gamma because this is P 2 by P 1. Okay. So, this would be gamma minus 1 upon gamma, gamma minus 1 upon gamma. What is P 2? P 2 equal to P 3 and P 4 equal to P 1. So, we can write P 2 by P 1 equal to P 3 by P 4. So, that we can write equal to P 3 by P 4 and this is again power gamma minus 1 upon gamma and hence this should be T 3 by T 4. Therefore, we can write T 4 by T 1 equal to T 3 by T 2. Therefore, we can write T 4 minus T 1. If we just subtract 1 from both sides, then T 4 minus T 1 divided by T 3 minus T 2 that should be equal to uh, T 1 by T 2, right? simply T 1 by T 2. So, this is what we had obtained using air standard equation by representing the compression process like this and then because P 4 equal to P 1 and P 3 equal to P 2 and then we could uh, write uh, the ratio of T 4 minus T 1 to T 3 minus T 2 like T 1 by T 2. So, what we can write again? Then cycle efficiency equal to 1 minus T 1 by T 2. So, what is 1 minus T 1 by T 2 or 1 minus if T 1 by T 2 just you try to understand if T 1 by T 2 then we can again write 1 minus 1 upon T 2 by T 1. So, that equal to 1 minus 1 upon what is T 2 by T 1? T 2 by T 1 that is P 2 by, by P 1 power gamma minus 1 upon gamma. So, that is P 2 by P 1 power gamma minus 1 upon gamma. What is P 2 by P 1? So, you can understand P 2 that is the pressure of the working fluid at the exit of the compressor and P 1 is the pressure of the working fluid at the inlet of the compressor. So, this P 2 by P 1 that is called pressure ratio and is represented by R P. So, essentially rise in pressure of the working fluid due to the compression process and that is R P. So, we can write it as cycle equal to 1 upon 1 power 1 minus 1 upon R p power gamma minus 1 upon gamma. What you can understand from this expression is that if we somehow increase the pressure ratio that means, if we can compress the air, if we can compress the air to the higher extent then efficiency of the cycle will be more. So, that means, higher the compression ratio higher will be the efficiency of the gas turbine unit or cycle efficiency. So, this is basically uh, the expression. So, if when R p is higher, it a cycle will be, it a cycle will 
increase. So, now question is we also can write this a mathematical efficiency you know like this. So, what is this? eta cycle equal to 1 minus T 1 by T 2. So, what is what is T 1 by T 2? Again using this air standard equation we can write 1 minus uh, V 2 by V 1 power gamma minus 1 right. So, this is 1 minus V 2 by V 1 to power gamma minus 1. So, we can write again this 1 minus 1 upon v 1 power v 2 power v 1 by v 2 power gamma minus 1. What is v 1 by v 2? So, v 1 by v 2 again if we go back to the p v diagram. So, basically you know here this this is the v 1 and at the end of the compression process volume has reduced and it is because of this reduction in volume we could increase the pressure from P 1 to P 2 and the ratio of V 1 by V 2 if you try to recall we have discussed in the context of auto cycle is known as the compression ratio. That means, we could compress the air or any other working substance and it is because of this compression we could increase the temperature of the working fluid uh, pressure of the working fluid also temperature will increase not uh, as I said you that pressure increase is more than the rise in or increase in temperature. So, here we can write that V 1 by V 2 is equal to compression ratio or R k or R c. So, this is known as compression ratio. So, we also can write eta cycle equal to 1 minus 1 upon R c power gamma minus 1 right. So, for the same compression ratio if the compression ratio is same efficiency of the Breton cycle. So, basically this is the Breton cycle efficiency efficiency of the Breton cycle will be equal to the efficiency of the auto cycle. So, for the same compression ratio. So, to summarize today's discussion, we have discussed about the gas turbine unit, we have classified the gas turbine units and then we have discussed about the you know operation of both open cycle and gas turbine units. Then we could define the isentropic efficiency of both compressor and turbines and finally, we could establish the cycle efficiency and then we have express the cycle efficiency both in terms of pressure ratio and the uh, compression ratio. So, with this I stop here today and we shall continue our discussion in the next class. Thank you. Mm -hmm.